Brett, the director, Chris Cunningham, said that sex is the main element of his work. Would you say that sex is the main element to Suede as well? No, no, not at all. Um, I think sort of sexuality, but that's not necessarily expressed in, in terms of, like, you know, just sex. Sexuality can mean a whole, have a whole lot of different definitions, can't it? Yeah. I mean? Sexuality can be about power and emotion. It doesn't have to be about page three, do you know what I mean? It's yeah. a totally different thing. But sexuality, yes. Is that still still the one thing that consumes you when you're with the lyrics and yeah. stuff that you're trying to portray? But, but cool. like I say, it's a it's a it's a very broad definition. Like, like music, you know, pop music is you know it's a it's a raw emotion in the same way mm. that sex is, and it comes from the same place, you know. I quite often get the horn when I'm singing, actually. Do you? Yeah, <laughs> I, I do on stage. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. No, like no more when I'm recording, but it's just like you said, it's just the yeah. emotion kind of comes from the same place. Yeah. I don't mean like no, I have I to know. run out in the loo and kind of <laughs> well, <when> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The middle eight, I'm just nipping out. It's late night. <laughs> I'll be back yeah. by the but do you, what do you do? Well, get the horn yeah, when Yeah, get I'm the singing. horn when you sing when you're Stop on stage. Big hard on <laughs> Yeah. I've heard of, no, I've heard of certain pop stars. No, no. Um, no. You know what? No. no. I don't know. Okay, no, well, I won't name no. names. It's I not like that. It's like just no, like a bit of subtle. It's more just like a little tingle. I get tingles. Yeah, I get vibes. I get little tingles and tickles and that. Yeah. Yeah, slightly flirtatious, maybe. Right. As opposed to, like, you know, storm. You feel sensual, <laughs> but not sexual. Maybe that's, that's right. Yeah, that's, that's probably, it. that's, he put it much better. Mm. Bjarke is often perceived as um, a very controversial, eccentric kind of character, um, as she's portrayed in the media. Do you think, you know, once you get that image, it's very difficult to, to I break mean, I out think of the it. media can be incredibly unfair, but I think in the case of someone like Bjork, that she is an amazing artist, and when I listen to her music and when I see her, I kind of feel like I'm going to be listening to her for, if I make it, you know, for the next 40 years or so. Do you think that it's still hard for women to get the music in industry, or do you think that it's a complete fallacy? I th there's definitely an element of that, for sure. Just because there's a set of pressures that are, you know, <laughs> kind of... Yeah. Do you think... Quite, it's like, you know, if you get up in the morning looking like crap, you know, everyone's going to go, oh, God, that's it, you know, she's looking really crap. The old tart. <laughs> guys can kind of get away with kind of, you know, like sort of a bit, days, uh, you know. You yeah. like though, people are like that. Bit of a beer like guy that, and a bit sort of like rocky and, you know, that's Well, the with the fellas, <laughs> see, we can get well, as, get away as with it messed easy, up yeah. as possible and it, it's like rock and roll. Yeah. You could have made an effort Looking tonight though, John, there, really. <laughs> Was it tough for you being, um, being a mother and looking after your kids and carrying on your career? I, I think that um, by about the end of last year, I kind of felt like I've got to take a bit of time out and I did. For because yourself, I'd been for all of us, for me, right. my kids, my yeah. family, because I feel like I've been juggling. And I think women are very good at this sort of thing. You guys are saying, I can do it, I can do it all, Cause because I want to do it all, and I want to do it really well. And so you do, like, ten things at once quite well. And then I just felt all of a sudden... I'm, the like I, I'm absolutely awful at juggling. Are I, you? Think I can focus on uh, something, and I do it, like, you know what I mean? But yeah. at the moment... Because like you, you're a dad as well, and people don't particularly yeah. think about, oh, well, he's a father, and he has to go out on tour, and you're Mrs. Kids. Yeah, kid. it's just Does a bit more of a schizophrenic lifestyle, you know. It it's is very schizo. It's, it's like one minute I'm here, I'm with the band, the entourage, and then I'm home changing nappies. When you're faced with going out on, say, on tour around America for three months, yeah. and you've got kids at home. This is how it was when we started, you know, the relationship, and anyway, me and my, me and my wife, Belinda, like, you know. Yeah. So we, we knew the school, we know how it is, and this is how I'm going to be, and it's kind of the baby was born in that environment, so... I think it's, it's, we don't know any difference, mm. you know, but I'm, I'm wondering whether, I'm sure there will be a time when I'm thinking like, you know, I mean, I only got upset the other, the first, like I rang up, you know, speaking of, to me, my wife, and she goes, uh, you know. You're not, you're not ready with this term yet, are you? What? Wife. No, it's not that. I keep, oh, okay. she's my mate as well, like, so I kind of don't <laughs> like saying wife, because <laughs> yeah, it sounds really, kind of choose my wife, so treat her differently to all my mates, which is, which is wrong. Like, yeah. Yeah. Go on, tell us. Belinda, me, me missus, <laughs> me, <laughs> my other half. <laughs> Me chick and all that. Carry on. Well, anyway, yeah, she just said, like, you know, Hannah at the moment has just started to say, like, you know, where's that? She just mm. got to that age. She's two in a few, in a week or something. And she's just got to that age where she's kind of like, you know, when the doorbell goes, she's going, Daddy, Daddy, oh. you know, and, and, mm. and all this on the telly. Oh, there's Daddy, you know, is he coming in and all this? So that, I got a bit upset then, like, because I was thinking, God, yeah, I do want to be home, you know. Mm. But then again, would I be happy sitting around, like, you know, I don't know, be writing songs going, I wish I could get out there get and out do and something, do you know. So while you've got the energy and the enthusiasm, you juggle the best you can. OK, time now to reflect on life's unpredictability. You're walking down the straight road, you hear a song, and you make a sharp turn. Here's US producer, DJ, remixer and hitmaker Armin van Helden's story. Song that changed my life. <laughs> Brett, what was the sonic catalyst that changed your life? 
Um, I don't think it was like any one, one sort of song, really. The yeah. only thing I could say that completely turned my life upside down was probably the probably punk and the pistols. Mm. Probably the, never mind the bollocks specifically. Which is as soon as I got, you know, like I kind of spent years and years sort of like listening to my dad's classical music and like going, oh, I don't like this, you know what I mean? And kind of like some mates all playing with, playing with sex pistols and that was it, you know. It was just something of my own, like we were talking about earlier. Mm. It gave you your own identity, and it sort of said something about you at the time. And, and it, you know, it, it, it was what you were, and, and it gave you this little badge to wear and this, this little suit of armour to walk, mm. walk through life and say that this is me, you know what I mean? And, uh, yeah, yeah, Sex Pistols. Nana, what song shaped your destiny? I'd, I'm sort of feeling a bit like you, you know, that there's a lot of things. You read my crib sheet. But li yeah, yeah. I'm <laughs> give it to me. <laughs> what was that again? It so well, too. But, <laughs> I mean, um, I think that punk definitely turned me inside out. There were things before that, you know, like songs in the key of life, Stevie Wonder, or, you know, Parliament, or things like that. But when I heard Joan Free Adolescence, I think X-Ray Specs yeah. was a really big inspiration. I mean, anyone around, her voice, you know, anyone Polly around Styron's that, sort of, voice. Anyone around our age group, it's like you couldn't be out yeah. of respect. I mean, it did actually yeah. completely change yeah. music. It turned music upside down. All the, all the values of the, that music promoted, it just, it just said the opposite. Mm -hmm. and it said instead of being kind of clever and long and intelligent and wordy and blah blah blah, blah you could just talk about negative things and you could, and it could just have as much excitement and exuberance as anything. Mm. Mm. Has and there it, been said, anything it said you could do it yourself as well, oh. which is a really important thing. <laughs> Okay, oh, just hang on, I'll take yeah, you one at a time. No, he's 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 very quickly to the point here. <laughs> I was just, it just come back to me, like, cause it wasn't punk, but I remember, like, 11 um, specials and the two-tone movement, you know, getting my head shaved, mm. and just that kind of, all that movement was probably the first thing I really kind of got into. Because I think when you're a kid, you're just running with the crowd. You're trying to find your way, and you're running with the crowd. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Because you want to fit in, but you... You kind of need to belong somewhere as well, you know? you know, you kind of... I kind of miss the punk thing, like, you know, yeah, although no, I'd, 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 I'd be with you. at it, like, you know. Okay, take a toilet break now, because in part two, we're going to be discussing the history of the verb, twisting tenderly to electronic and getting shocked senseless with an exclusive showing of Ash's highly controversial band video, Numbskull.